Corporate finance practice problem using OneNote. Capital budgeting with reinvestment rate assumption. Get ready. It's time to take your chance with corporate finance. Here we are in OneNote. If you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along. You're not required to, but if would like to, we're in the icon left-hand side, practice problems tab, down in the 1230 capital budgeting with reinvestment rate assumption tab. Also note when using OneNote, look at the immersive reader tool. Many of the presentations up top will be mirrored down in the text area. Same name, same number, but with transcripts transcripts that can be translated into multiple different languages and either listened to or read in them closing the icon up we have our information up top the calculations down below similar starting point in our practice problem we're imagining an initial investment which you can imagine being in equipment being in a project being in uh, a inventory that we are then expecting a future return on many years into the future, five years in this case, future cash flows projected down here. And we have the cost of capital, which could be called the hurdle rate, the discount rate of the 10%. We expect to be putting, in this case, the 300 down up front for the expected returns in the future at year one, 128,000, year two, 130,000, year three, 90,000, four, 16,000, and five, 28,000. The two methods for, for assessing this type of project due to it being out a few years into the future, the net present value NPV and the internal rate of return IRR are the two primary tools we have to measure these long-term type of projects because they do take into consideration the time value of money. As we have seen those in prior presentations, we've been taking a look at the future flows and bringing them back using the discount rate or whatever we want to call the rate, the cost of capital rate, the hurdle rate, discounting them back to the present time period. Now, as we have seen those in the past, you might be saying, shouldn't I be taking into consideration the fact that if I get the money sooner, for example, in a particular project, I should be able to reinvest that money. And if I compare it to other projects, I should be able to take into consideration, you know, the amount of return I could get from the return on the money. So in this example, for example, if I put the 300,000 down up front and I get the money back in year one as opposed to year five, then the money I got in year one over the life of this project, I should be able to reinvest somewhere, not in the same project, but reinvest it because I now have that money and get a return on it for the next four years. So I might want to then do a future value type of calculation to consider what that impact will be and then we'll talk further possibly in future presentations on what we might be able to do with that including possibly a modified internal rate of return type of calculation so in this case we're thinking okay well why don't i try to do a future value and think about what if i can reinvest this money as the inflow comes in in some other project to get a return on it and that's why of course getting the money sooner would be better now, as we reinvest it, you can ask, well, what kind of rate do you think we're going to get when we reinvest it? Typically, we'll want to use the cost of capital because that's the rate that we, ha we have the minimum rate to clear before we accept another project. So if we get the money sooner, well, hopefully we could put it somewhere else and get the 10%. Or we might possibly be able to find a project that's equivalent to the project we have now, meaning we might put it in at the same rate we're getting in the current project which would be the internal rate of return. So we could calculate the internal rate of return and see, see if we can basically reinvest at that rate. Note, however, that that would be a fairly aggressive strategy because the fact that we chose this project probably means it's because it's our highest return project. And therefore, it's not likely that if we didn't put as much money down, if we just got the inflow that we're going to find a project at that rate. But it's possible. It's a more aggressive type of strategy. The more common strategy would probably be using the cost of capital. That would be the more conservative type of approach. So let's see how this might might look. We're going to assume the inflows are coming back in. Just mirroring this, we got the 128,000. What we're going to do is a future value type of calculation then on it. We're going to take that 128,000 future value. This is, of course, a time value of money calculation. If you want to see multiple ways to do this, we could do this with a formula. We could do it with tables. You could see prior pr the prior section where we concentrate on many different ways you could do this calculation. The Excel would be the, the way that uh, would be the easiest way to do it and possibly most applicable given the fact 
that we will have to do a calculation for each one of these years because it is not an annuity. So, and that would be very easy, of course, to do in Excel. Difficult to do if you have to do it by a formula. Not too bad if you have to use tables, but still not the nicest thing to do. So in any case, we got the 128,000 future value. The rate then would be the cost of capital is what we're choosing this time rather than the internal rate of return, comma, the number of periods. We're going to say this is where it gets a little bit tricky. If you were to do this with a formula, just conceptually, we can see, well, if we got it back in period one over the life of the project since that point, we would have one, two, three, four years. So the number of periods would be four. If you did that in a formula in Excel, then it would be nice to be able to take year five, notice make it an absolute reference by putting a dollar sign before the D and the, and the two, and then minus this cell right here, which is a one, which of course five minus one will give you the four years. And that is something that you can then copy down because this cell will remain the same being five and this cell will change, which will be two next time, which should give you the proper calculation as you go, allowing you to copy this down easily. Also note the rate is an absolute reference. It's outside the data set. So you can copy that down too. And then comma, comma, the, the amount is going to be for the, for the present value, the 128,000. So if we took that into the future this time, now we're looking at it, bringing it out into the future to see what kind of we'd get the 187,405. If we do that for year two, looking something like this, we would take that 130,000. We're going to future value it. The rate is the same cell here, which of course would be that 10%. And then we got the comma, uh, the payment would then be the, uh, I'm sorry, the number of periods. We have that tricky situation in concept. It would be one, two, three, right? But we can see this cell reference would be referencing cell five minus two, which would give us the three and allow us to basically copy it down. The five being an absolute reference, the cell allowing to move as we copy the formula down. And then comma, comma, the present value then is the 130. Let's do it one more time. And so we've take the 90,000 and I'm sorry, the future value is the 17330. And then we take the 90, we're future valuing this. So the future value of the rate, same cell. So that's going to be the 10%. Once again, absolute reference on it, comma, number of periods. Now would be two, because we got two years after this point in time, calculated as five minus three. This cell being the absolute value of five minus the three uh, here would give us the two, comma, comma. And then we've got the present value of the 90,000. So if we continue that process on down, we can we can then say, okay, if I future value this, we got the 514,935. Uh, and that might be a way that we could basically do further analysis when comparing projects to projects to consider the fact that it would be best, you know, what would happen if we get the money back sooner and we're able to basically reinvest that money at, we're saying this time, the cost of capital. Now they could make you calculate this with, the internal rate of return and a book problem might actually like to do this not simply because the internal rate of return might be used in practice which it may although it be more aggressive it uh, it'll also force you to calculate the internal rate of return which you can then use to figure out the future value so the idea would be let's figure out what rate of return we have on this project and assume that we can get that good rate of return on future projects as well again that's aggressive because we're thinking that any project over the 10% might be something that we would basically put money into. The fact that we chose this project is because it maybe it was the highest project rate of return. And of course, we had to put down a substantial amount of money in order to take on this project. So as we get the money in, you would think it less likely that we would be able to find other projects at that rate, but possibly we might be able to. And if we're thinking if we're going into a period of um you know more opportunity or something like that then maybe that would be a way to go and it would be a little bit more aggressive so we can then say let's calculate our internal rate of return so we got our, our series of payments and so this is just our series of payments negative three hundred thousand is the outflow and then all the inflows from this project the internal rate of return on the calculator could be calculated something like this would be equal to the irr and then this range from the 300,000 negative down to the 28,000, that would give us the internal rate of return 13.45. Uh, that is the rate at which 
the net present value calculation would be zero. So that's the internal rate of return, the rate at which the net present value would be zero. That's basically the rate of return for this project. If we assume that the inflows that we can get, now we can reinvest them as we get the inflows in another project at the internal rate of return, 1345, then we can do our same kind of assumption as we get these inflows and try to think about, okay, what would be the future value for this time period, assuming we can reinvest these, these uh, inflows. So we could take the same 128,000, and now we're saying that we want the future value of the rate, this time that rate being the 13.45%, the internal rate of return. And that's an absolute reference. So when we copy it down, that rate will not change. That's the dollar sign before the I and 10. Then we say comma, the number of periods is going to be, that's the tricky one. It's actually going to be everything after this period because we still have one, two, three, four periods remaining. So we're going to calculate the inflow for that period of time. And we're going to calculate that in the, in the cell reference by saying, I want to take the cell five here with the five in it and make that an absolute reference minus the cell with the one in it, which is not an absolute reference. So when I copy it down, the cell with the five in it does not change, but the cell with the one in it does change relative to the cells that go down, which should result in the proper calculation. So we can copy this down easily. Then we got the comma comma. We've got the present value, and that's going to be the 128. So the future value coming out to the 212072. And then if we take the second one, same kind of thing here. We're going to take the future value, which would be the rate, which is the absolute reference. We're taking the internal rate of return, 13.55, 13.45. And then we're taking the number of periods, which would now be everything after the two. So what three periods remain after that, which we will calculate as this cell being the absolute reference of this cell with a five in it, five minus this cell with a two, which would give us that three that would be remaining. And then the comma comma, we got the present value at the 130,000. That gives us the future value 189,845. Then we have the 90,000. Same thing. We're going to say this will be the future value, the rate. It's going to be that 13.55. It's an absolute reference. We've got the number of periods, which would be the two remaining two periods remaining here calculated as the period with the five in it so with a five in it that's an absolute reference and then minus the cell with the four in it uh minus the cell with the three in it <laughs> which would give us our two periods that would remain and then comma comma and we get then the the uh present value the year that would be the 90 giving us the total of the 115 845 so if we did that all the way down then we can sum up our uh, our flows here and this results in basically a future value so notice what we did we did the future value calculation in order to make it basically take this into consideration and we might talk a little bit more about what we can do from that point in future presentations possibly look at a modified internal rate of return but you can see the difference here between the the 514 935 and the 563 916 due to the fact of using either the 13.45 more aggressive internal rate of return versus the cost of capital note that the internal rate of return should almost always be higher than the cost of capital because if it were not we probably wouldn't have accepted this project in the first place so you would expect the internal rate of return to be higher if we're using that to take into consideration what we expect to receive on the cash flows as the project goes then that would be a more aggressive kind of position